Hello and welcome to In The Loop Wollongong, I'm Nathan. And I'm Natasha and we have a very exciting show for you this month. I get to go riding on a horse. Oh, that's right. And to make sure you don't miss out and to get a sneak peek of what's coming up in each episode, make sure you stay in the loop with us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. Coming up later in the show... Bill Wormoku's Greg Ellis sits down with former Ironman, Baywatch star and Mexican restaurant mogul Jonathan Crow. In the Loop's resident Jughead Ryan Cram heads south to continue his eternal quest to find the best burgers on the south coast. Tanya Vanderwater from Buckaroo Leather drops round to tell us about her growing family owned innovative business. UOW PhD student and researcher Lim Min Buchanan is going to teach us all about the effects of online marketing. And we visited NEC's Innovation Campus office to talk to National Sales Manager Bob Lanigan about their decision to locate right here in Wollongong. But first things first. This year I am doing the Stars of Wollongong Dance for Cancer. Stop it, show yep. some moves. Couldn't possibly, Natasha, yeah. I'm still rehearsing. But, you know, it's all for a good cause. 100% of the profits go to the Cancer Council, so please donate. Oh, great stuff. I'm so glad you're finally giving back to the community. Finally? Finally. Oh, <laughs> now, on with the show. First up this month, I get to tick off an item on my bucket list. I'm going horse riding at Darks Forest Riding Ranch. This segment is brought to you by Destination Wollongong and Internetrix. Today I'm at Darks Forest Riding Ranch near Helensburg and I'm going to do something that every little girl dreams of, well I did anyway, and that's to learn how to ride a horse. Hi Claire, how are you going? Good thanks, it's <laughs> nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Nice hey. to meet you. And who's this little one? This is Thomas. Oh, hello. He's one of Thomas. our horse riding superstars. So yeah. we always do everything from the left side. Oh, thank God for the stairs, that's all I can say. <laughs> nice and easy for yep. you. So climb up to the top step for me. Yep. Put your right hand at the back of the saddle. Yep. Perfect. Left hand at the front and grab your reins as well. Yep. Pop your left foot in the saddle. You're going to go up quickly and land down nice and softly on the saddle. Okay, nice. that wasn't too bad. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. All right. Are you ready to head to the arena? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so we're going to steer him up this way. So as you can see, I've got a little square lined out for us. I'm going to teach you how to control him around it. Yep. Learn some finer points of horse riding. Making sure that when we ask him to go, what you're going to do, click your tongue and say, and tap with your legs and to stop. Whoa. Good. That's it. So what do you guys offer here? So we do trail riding for the public as well as the lessons like what you're doing at the moment. People come and learn how to control and steer the horses and things like that. So how young can you be and how old can you be? So our lessons are for kids that are over four. Then for the kids under that sort of age, well under the age of six really, we do offer pony leads where mum or dad gets to walk them around. And, and then for kids over the age of seven and up, we do take them out into the bush on the trail rides. They just need to be old enough and strong enough to actually steer and control the horses. Would you be interested in learning a bit of trotting today? Yes. Yep, so I'm gonna take you into the round yard just over there. Okay, so what I want you to do now is as we ask him to trot, you're gonna click your tongue more and more. So, yeah. Constantly and tap, tap, tap with your heels. All right, are you ready? We'll yeah. only go for a couple of steps. You ready? Here he goes. There you go. Good and whoa, Thomas. Whoa, Good Thomas. Good boy, give him a Good big pat. Boy. Woo! Well done. Oh, now we can go get a cocktail. Have a mojito, buddy. Would you like that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so from here, we're we going to head out on a trail? Yes, out into the bush. So how many trails do you have here? So we've got one main trail, but we have about eight, nine out there that yeah. veer off to the side. So depending on experience, we do take different trails. Right. I've had such a good time today and 
ticked something off my bucket list. I've found a new hobby and I'm keeping these shoes as well. If you want to get involved, all you have to do is head to their website and Facebook page for all the details. We're heading off back to the ranch now. See ya. Come on. Let's go. Oh, I absolutely loved horsing around. <laughs> have you been on a horse? No. <laughs> Dark Forest Riding Ranch are giving away a trail ride valued at $115 to win. Share the episode or segment and let us know in the comments why you want to go on a trail ride. This segment is made possible by Wollongong Central. Discover the city. Here's my Elroy has been a staple for the Wollongong nightlife since they opened their doors in 2012. And this year has sparked a change with them moving out of Globe Lane to make way for the new David Jones coming to Wollongong later this year. Let's check out the new venue. I'm here with the owner of Kiss Boy Elroy, Ben Hudson. So tell me, new venue, you've moved out of Globe Lane? Yeah, so how are we feeling? Globe. Nostalgic, yeah. excited? Excited. Excited? Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, it's been a really good sort of two, three months yeah. uh, and it's a great area and uh, we're definitely nervous to start with okay. but uh, it's all good now. Great, alright, so tell me about the space. Yeah, we felt like that from the old place we needed to step things up a bit and just change the feel of the place a bit. To try to replicate what was going down there to bring it into this space just didn't work so, and that whole American diner is sort of the look that we're going for. Moving on to the food, the good tell stuff. me about your new menu. So what we've done is we've brought majority of the menu over. So the burgers were working, the chili cheese fries were working. That was all working. We've just added to what we were doing. And yep. that is the smoked meat. So it's an American um, smoker. And we smoked this meat here for 12 hours. We've also brought over the uh, the fried chicken. Yeah, so this smells good. I can smell it from here. So we do a bucket of fried chicken, or you can just get them in the single pieces as well. That looks so good. And you're doing takeaway and CBD delivery service. Yeah, so we about this. Our takeaway has definitely stepped up. Like just then, we just did 15 orders uh, in the last sort of five minutes. We're working with Deliveroo at the moment, so Fun. we're uh, super excited to be a part of what they're doing in Wollongong. So we know the food's amazing, but now it's time to talk about my specialty, the drinking. So guys, tell me, what beers have you got in here? So at His Boy Elroy, uh, we like to think that we're a bit of a craft beer bar here. So at the moment, we're doing monthly rotating specials from different breweries around Australia. That's fun, okay. Yes, it's excellent. Um, at the moment, we're showcasing Wayward. And you've branched out into whiskey, I see. <laughs> yes, we're branching a bit further into whiskey. At the old venue, we showcased 13 different whiskeys. Yep. Uh, I think we are now going closer to the 40 mark. 40? Yeah, 40, yes. So that's a pretty big change from 13 at the old venue. Massive change. Right, <laughs> and now onto my personal favourite, cocktails. Tell me about them. What cocktails. Have you got? We've doubled our menu. We are getting a lot more classics in on our menu. Uh, also doing a lot of our own as well. Okay, so do you guys have a favourite one? If I was to say make me a cocktail, what would you make me? I would make a margarita. <laughs> Alright, let's make one. Let's make a cocktail. Look at that shaking technique. I don't know a lot about cocktails, but I know that that That's was pretty shake. good. That was, a, that was a solid shake right there. There we go, margarita. Yum! Thanks guys, I can't wait to get into this. Too easy. Well, I think I've found my new favourite bar. If you want to check out the new His Boy Elroy, head to their Facebook page or come down to Kira Street and get yourself a kick-ass cocktail. His Boy Elroy are giving away two $50 vouchers. To win one, share the episode or segment and let us know in the comments who you'll be treating to a burger at His Boy Elroy. And now, Greg Ellis sits down with Jonathan Crow to talk about his life as Iron Man and what it's like to save the world. No, an Iron Man, not Iron Man. This segment is brought to you by Access Law Group and the Illawarra Mercury. Hi, Greg Ellis from the Illawarra Mercury, and today on the People of Wollongong, we're talking to former World Ironman champion Jonathan Crow. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Greg, for having me. Now, I want to start by going back right to the beginning. Where did the interest in the beach begin? In the sort of... um, it happened when I was five years old, and the next door neighbour, a, a gentleman called Alan Weir, um, was in Wollongong Surf Club and uh, came in to our house one morning and said, I'm going, I'm taking the kids down to Nippers, would you like to come? So I went from there and um, you know, the, the rest is history. And how quickly did you realise it was something you were going to be able to compete on a, a world stage at? 
Uh, it wasn't really until I was about 16 or 17 where, when Iron Man really took off and, and obviously you know, there was Darren Mercer and Guy Leach and Grant Kenny and, and they started doing the, the Nutrigrain races and I was still doing my HSC when they started and uh, while I was at university um, it was hard because a lot of my mates were, were racing and competing but I didn't really have the time to train to be competitive in those events. Um, but I was lucky enough in my last year at university um, my hours dropped off and I was able to, to start concentrating on training and, and I made a decision that I'd give it you know, 12 months after I'd graduated from university to see what happened and um, fortunately that 12 months turned into 10 years. So how many years did you compete at the elite level again and uh, remind us of the championships you won? Um, so I, I, it was about 10 years so um, that I raced and, and in that time um, I, I don't know the exact number I think there was about six or seven world championships um, uh, five or six Australian titles. Um, you know, I won the Coolangatta Gold. I got second in the Coolangatta Gold. Um, you know, there was a lot of events, but you know, I'd, it never really, it was never really hard for me because I just loved doing it, and um, I loved always pushing myself, and I loved, um, you know, it was great. We, you could do. We got to travel. We got to meet people. We got to do some amazing things. You know, go to the Olympics, go to Baywatch. Um, it, it, it never felt like a job to me. Okay, tell us about Baywatch. How did it happen and what was it like working with uh, Pamela and the, the Hoff? Uh, look, it, you know, another example of just where Surf Club has taken me. Um, we were over in South Africa at the World Titles. Um, I was with the North Wollongong Surf Life Saving Team. We were training in the pool beside the American team. The American manager and I struck up a conversation. Um, we became quite good mates over the, the, the length of the trip. I didn't really realize, I didn't know who he was at the time. Um, I then went to the States um, a couple of months later and contacted him and he said, pop round and come and see me and um, at work. So I pulled up in a, in a taxi out the front of Baywatch headquarters. From there, a movie script came out. Um, we had to do some screen testing and um, I still say to this day that I think they cast me in the role to make the other guys look good, uh, particularly Pamela and Hoff, because uh, you know I couldn't act. <laughs> I couldn't act at all. But it was, you know, it was an amazing experience. Um, a lot of uh, long days. You know, we'd be there at sort of six in the morning and get off at ten, eleven at night. But um, you know, again, it wasn't like you were at work. And then at the end of the day, you'd walk up off the beach, and there'd be fifty or sixty buses in the in the car park, and there'd be a big fence, and and you know, thousands of people sitting there watching your mm. film, and. And it was only then that you sort of realise, wow, you know, I'm, I've just been working on the most watched TV show in the world. It was amazing, um, you know, the coverage that it got and so, how so many people were interested in the, in the show. Yeah. Now, we segue into the world of business. I think after you uh, finished competing and after Baywatch and that, I think uh, you were doing some, I saw you there one day, you were doing some work in real estate on Cliff Road. I think then you went to Queensland in real estate. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that experience. I was getting towards the end of my um, racing career and um, I had a physiotherapy degree, um, but I was really interested in real estate and property development. And um, I actually went and knocked on John Carson's door, um, the, the gentleman that owned Beechwood Homes and the, the Wollongong Hawks. And he, we'd never met before. And he said to me, what do you want? And I said, I want a job. And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I don't care. I'll do your photocopying. I'll make you coffee. I just want to learn. And he was kind enough, and I always think fondly of John, that gave me that break into property development and construction and, and real estate. And so I worked with him for a number of years on Cliff Road, we, where we built the, the developments down there. And then I was offered a role as a director of development for an American company that um, had a joint venture with Nakheel, which is the, the Dubai government construction arm. So that's the company that did the Palms and the World and, and, and pretty much most of the construction that was going on in Dubai. So we moved over there, um, live, I lived there for four years. Okay, so four years over there, back to Australia, and now you're involved in the Zambrero restaurant chain, which is a humanitarian business, essentially, isn't it? Uh, tell us how that came about and uh, some of the things you're doing now with that. Um, yeah, look, it, we, we, when we came back from Dubai, we lived in Townsville for three years and we bought a real estate agency up there and, um, and, and really enjoyed that. And, and there was five Zambreros up there. One of the first Zambrero stores ever to be franchised was opened up there. And we were moving back to Wollongong for family reasons. And um, we happened to come across someone and they told us that the Wollongong store was on the market and at the bottom of Crown Street. And it was actually a corporate store before we took over. 
So we started negotiating on that, and uh, my wife had always said to me, you know, I'd love to own a, a Zambrero in Wollongong, and so that sort of seemed to be fate. We basically look after Sydney, Newcastle, Wollongong, um, all the way up into the top of the Hunter Valley and down the Victorian border uh, along the coast. For every burrito or bowl that we sell, we donate a plate of food to someone in need. And um, we also, on the, to um, go along with that, we also, for all our retail products that we sell, so we, we're now selling sauces and muesli bars and things like that, black rice. We, um, for every one of those that we sell, a, a meal is donated to Food Bank, which is obviously the Australian, um, our Australian link as well. But we've partnered with an organisation which is called Rise Against Hunger, and um, we're donating about 100 meals a week, 100,000 meals a week at the moment. So we hit 14 million meals over Easter, and we expect to hit 20 million meals um, some, some way through the mid, mid quarter of next, next quarter. So it's pretty amazing to be a part of that. Okay, we're up for time, so to finish off, I like to do it differently every time we do this, but I might get you to look into the camera over there, and for any young surfers or lifesavers or anyone young in sport coming up, what advice would you give to um, someone young watching this show about um, what to do, how to go about it? And look, I, I was probably not the most naturally talented athlete, but I got where I got from doing the hard work, and when the other guys would finish training, I would keep on going. So. You know, there's, there's no substitute for a lot of hard work. Natural talent will only get you so far, but it's the hours in the water and on the ski and, and that extra determination which will really get there. Jonathan Crow, thank you so much. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Can you put the music under this, yeah? Yes. Awesome. Up next, Prammy heads south for the third part in an ongoing in-depth investigation into finding the best burgers. Hey, it's Crammy, and if you are new to In The Loop, you may not realise that I'm a bit of a burger connoisseur. I've already explored what the city centre has to offer, as well as the northern suburbs. What's left? Of course, the southern suburbs. And where else would you start? Then beautiful, amazing, I may be biased, Dapto. We're here at Alexander's Cafe. Let's go inside, meet Chase, and find out what burger he's going to serve up for us today. And here he is, the man from Alexander's Cafe. Chase, how are you? Uh, very well, you? Now yeah. tell us, how long has this place been open here in Dapto? Uh, we've been operating in Dapto for four years. What made you decide to open a cafe like this in Dapto? Well, I grew up here, so there wasn't really anywhere for me to go as a kid besides the mall, so there was nothing <laughs> outside of the mall to go. Yeah. So just wanted a third space for the community. And it's a slice of hipster Sydney, if I do say, in Dapto, which I never yeah. thought I would see growing up in Dapto, so I'm so glad that you decided to do it. Have you noticed a great response from everyone else in Dapto as well? Yeah, absolutely. They, As soon as they walk in, they fall in love with the store. Okay, so if I was going to try a burger, if I've never been to Alexander's before, I walk in, I'm going to order a burger, what burger do I order? Uh, you, you've got to have the Dapto burger. Oh, of course, the Dapto burger, 253 I represent. We're in the kitchen, it is time to construct the Dapto burger, so let's get it underway. So what am I looking for in the Dapto burger, What's, what am I going to have? Uh, so you've got the beef patty, mm -hmm. which has uh, seven spices, and tomato, beetroot, lettuce, cheese, onion. So I have avocado there. Dapto Burger doesn't normally have an avocado, but if you would like some. Oh, we want to fancy yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. I'll have some and avocado. I heard you were coming, so <laughs> I got nervous. Okay. <laughs> the Dapto one really gets ordered a lot in here, but um, which is why in the Dapto Beach Chaos, like the whole menu for the burgers is revolves around Dapto. Oh, really? Yeah, so. So give me an example, what is So it? there's a Kunawara cheeseburger. Okay. There's a Brooks Reach Caesar chicken. Is there a Horsley? Halloumi. Okay, of course, yeah. <laughs> you should work in radio with the alliteration you got going on. That's what radio is all about, alliteration. There we go. Oh, that looks amazing. Yes, the Dapto burger is done. Let's hit the dining room and devour this bad boy. I cannot wait. The Dapto burger has arrived on the table. There's only one more thing to do now, and that is to put it in my mouth and try this thing. I'm so desperate to try and work out these seven secret spices, but we'll see how it goes. Mm. That is so tasty, seriously. I feel like I've got sauce all over my face, but I don't really care. That's what eating burgers is all about. As far as those seven spices are concerned, I'm gonna start by saying salt, pepper, 
From there, I'm stumped. I've got no idea, but the combination of whatever those spices are is so good. Chase, you've done a sensational job with this burger. I'd shake Thank your you. hand, yeah, but I'm a little bit saucy, <laughs> and I'm about to dive back into this burger. So thanks so much for having no us. I'm going to give you. that a solid nine out of 10. That's a great burger. And as I said, you can mix and match it, change things on the menu, and try it for yourself down at Alexander's Cafe in Dapto. The second stop for the tour of the burgers in the southern suburbs has brought us here to beautiful Albion Park. So the last time I did a tour of the northern suburbs and tried the burgers out there, we asked for people to leave comments and suggestions on where to go. And I can't tell you how many people suggested that we come here to Blue Jay Cafe in Albion Park. So why do you think people were so passionate about coming here? Um, I just think that we just use like good quality ingredients. We try to keep on trend with everything and the staff are really good as well. What am I going to be eating today? If I was going to come to Blue Jay Cafe and order one of the burgers, yep. which one are we going to try? Um, definitely most popular is a southern fried chicken burger. I'm salivating right now. I've, <laughs> enough with the questions. I say we get in the kitchen, we're going to watch it, you whip up this burger yep. and then we're going to get down to eating this delicious thing. I can't right, wait. Sounds good. So we get a piece of our chicken, mm -hmm. goes into the buttermilk, into oh. the secret spice mix. Which is obviously some flour in there as well. Yep. Can you give us maybe two? Give us two. Flour. Oh, come on, yeah. Uh, oregano. Yeah. Paprika. Good one. And that's it. She's and just, that's it. She's just shut up shop now on the secret blends. So that goes in. Oh. All right, so we've got the honey mustard aioli that we make here. And the fresh apple. Fresh apple. Another secret sauce, is that? Yep, secret ranch sauce. <laughs> so many secrets here at Blue Jay Cafe. Absolutely. It's all about just doing it ourselves, like making everything ourselves, I think, is a big secret. Mm -hmm. Put our southern fried. Oh, look at that. On the top. And that will be the best burger you've had today. Okay, you can probably tell from the huge smile on my face how excited I am to try this southern fried chicken burger at Blue Jay Cafe in Albion Park. I'm so hungry and I just cannot wait to eat this. Here we go. That was so delicious. I never give a 10, but I'm gonna go as close as I possibly can for this bur burger. And that is a nine and a half out of 10. It's a burger you have to come and try. Southern fried chicken burger at Blue Jay Cafe in Albion Park. Let's cut this segment so I can keep eating this thing, please. Okay, stop number three is down in beautiful Kiama, which there's already so many reasons to come to Kiama. The blowhole, the beaches, and now burgers, thanks to the Hungry Monkey. And I'm joined by one of the owners, Jack. How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you going? Very good. Now, how long have you guys been open here? Uh, mate, it was two years in Easter, so just over two years now. I have to ask, and I'm sure you get asked this all the time, the name, Hungry Monkey. Yeah. Why the Hungry Monkey? I don't know, my business partner's quite creative with all that kind of stuff, but in fact, I come up with it in the end. And it's stuck. Stuck. And it's stuck, and it's now in ink form on Jack's arm. I don't know whether yeah. you can see this, but <laughs> got a nice Hungry Monkey tattoo there. Okay, now we're here for the obvious, to try one of these amazing Hungry Monkey burgers. Yep. We're about to head into the kitchen, so what should I be asking your head chef to cook for us today? What burger, if you could pick any off the menu, which one would it be? Mate, probably by far the biggest seller is our bad boy. Okay. Um, I can't fault it. Everything just works with it. Can you give me a bit of a preview of what I'm look, Mate, gonna be you're looking, looking at, at here? Bacon, onion rings, American style cheese. Tick, 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 tick. Angus beef. Love it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jack from Hungry Monkey. No worries. Thank you. Here it is, the amazing finished product, the bad boy at Hungry Monkey in Kiama. Look at it, looks so good. That potato bun, the onion rings, bacon, jack cheese. We've got the mustard aioli, the chipotle mayo. There's only one more thing to do. Let's try this. Oh. It's just so good. The combination of the crunchy onion rings, the meat, the cheese, the sauces. It's just an amazing combination. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. And I never give 10s, so that is an extremely high score for me. It is easily one of the best burgers on the South Coast. Come and try it at the Hungry Monkey, the Bad Boy. There's also so many other burgers on the menu to try, but I would recommend the Bad Boy when you're starting out. Our next stop is the last stop on the South Coast Burger Tour. We're going to go meet some alpacas. So here we are just outside Berry at Millpacker Farms. Why are we here? Because we're on our way to have an alpaca burger, but you can't have an alpaca burger without alpaca. 
So we're here with Ian from Millpacker. How are you? Well, I'm very well, thank you. Now, I don't know whether you can see, but behind us there are some glorious, glorious animals. They're the mums that make the, uh, the babies and we only eat the males, so uh, hopefully they'll produce plenty of males for us for the future to keep the very hotel up to date with their burgers and their cofters. Now, Ian, I have to ask, you're in farming. Yep. Why alpacas? Uh, alpacas, they're very good for the land. They um, only drink two litres of water a day, where a dairy cow will drink 70 litres. Uh, they've got lovely little soft pads like a kangaroo and a dog, so they're very kind to the pasture. They don't rip it up, they don't do anything. And um, they've got a very good nature, that's all. They're, they're not temperamental like cattle, not as dumb as sheep. They've actually got a few brains, so they're, they're a good animal but they taste great because it's in between lamb and veal. Oh, I can't, cannot wait to get down to Berry Hotel and try one of these burgers. Oh, you'll stay the night. <laughs> I probably will if I'm offered a few drinks, don't worry. <laughs> Here we are in the kitchen at the Berry Hotel. Matt has his apron on. Ready He's to go. ready to cook up the world famous, I'll say world famous, because I think they deserve to be, alpaca burgers at yep. the Berry Hotel. So let's so here slap we go. one of these patties on the grill. So we've got our, our burger patties already made up. We're going to just char grill them nicely. So when we first worked with Ian, with the alpaca burger and we, we worked on what the flavours were and, and when we came up with what the meat patty was going to taste like, we then thought what would complement it. So we serve it on a Turkish bread roll that we actually get made for us in Berry from the Berry Bakery just up the road and they make them especially for us. We also serve it with a uh, with fresh rocket and rocket's, rocket's great on a bird because it's nice and peppery and fresh. Mm -hmm. We serve it with slow roast tomatoes and that gives it a bit of richness which adds to the rocket flavour because tomatoes and rocket go sensational together. Beautiful. And that's it. All right. Voted okay. in the top six pub burgers in the Sydney Morning Herald Good Pub Guide. I cannot wait to try it. Looks amazing and smells delicious. Bring it on. Great stuff. This is it, the finished product at the Berry Hotel, the world famous alpaca burger. I've got to say, it smells amazing. I cannot wait to try it with the roasted tomatoes, the caramelised onions, the cheese. All right, let's do this. That is a solid nine out of 10 for this burger. And as you've heard me say, I never give tens. So just take my nines as tens. You've really got to come and try this burger at the Berry Hotel. This is a very good reason not to bypass Berry. Stop in and try the alpaca burger at the Berry Hotel. Thanks so much to all the businesses that enabled us to come there and try their delicious burgers. And remember, my opinions and scores are just my own. It's up to you to get out there and try the burgers and let us know where you find some absolute gem burgers in the region. You can do so in the comments below. I'll be trying some of those suggestions as soon as I can get over these four delicious burgers today. I'm so full, but I'm definitely not leaving this on my plate. I'm gonna finish this. So thanks for watching. Hungry Monkey, Berry Hotel, Blue Jays and Alexander's Cafe are each giving away a $50 voucher. To win all of the burgers, share the episode or segment and let us know in the comments who you'll be taking on a South Coast burger tour. For Innovative Business this month, we sit down with Tanya Vanderwater from Buckaroo Leather to talk about her family-owned business and how they now ship their Australian-made leather products all over the world. This segment is made possible by Advantage Wollongong, Lancaster Law and Mediation and Kazen Business and Financial. My name is Tanya Vanderwater and I'm the owner and director uh, of Buc Buckaroo Leatherworks. Buckaroo Leatherworks is a family owned and operated business. Uh, we're in our 46th year of operation and it was started by my dad um, pretty much back in South Africa when he first started working with leather. And eventually the business came here to Wollongong and um, started to employ uh, a few other people and it started to gradually grow. And today we're a fully operational business, we've got a big staff force, um, but still very much focused on leather work and the, the traditional values, I guess, that come with that craft. He had a, a pretty unique idea, and that idea was to, to basically revolutionise the way that tradesmen carried their tools um, on a specifically designed tool belt. And so I saw his idea and I really felt like we could go somewhere with it. And um, I guess for me, the passion lay in bringing something new to, to a market that was pretty new for us. We supply into the tools and hardware industry. Um, and it was just the opportunity to see the business grow and know that it was something that I could, could, you know, could continue on as a second generation owner. Um, and it, it's now a legacy, it's my dad's legacy, so I'm proud to continue it on. 
So we specialise now in, um, in tradesmen's belts, so it's for professional tradespeople. And our unique selling point is that you can kit up your belt based on the tools that you're carrying. So it's not necessarily trade specific. We don't do belts just for carpenters or just for scaffolders or that sort of thing. So anybody can wear our products and kit it up based on what they need um, to carry day in, day out. Our products are sold all throughout the world. So we sell into Southeast Asia, all over Europe, um, America. So to suit a domestic market, we make a couple of thousand belts a week and that's to service our reselling customers. Um, but then at any stage, if we get an order that's an export order, that could easily double. So our capacity to produce is based on really servicing the needs of our local customers. Um, but having said that, once we get an injection of a big order from overseas, our capabilities to, pr to produce can, can quickly increase. Um, and that dynamic, I guess, or well, that flexibility rather that we have in our business is um, a big strength of ours. For, for me personally, I, I love being in this area. I've grown up here. Uh, and I love the lifestyle that comes with being in a place like the Illawarra. And I, I would say that our staff are the same. For us, it's about you know, working hard, but also being in an environment that you can enjoy at the end of the day. I think also being in a regional area like Wollongong, you know, we're pretty adaptable as well. We don't have the constraints that sometimes you find you have in a capital city. Um, and at the end of the day, really for us being in Wollongong, we operate no different to how we would if we were in a capital city. And um, it's been of benefit to us because we're still able to ship our products all over the world uh, and still be able to enjoy the lifestyle that we do. And I think it's nice to know that there's businesses like ours that still exist. A lot of people think that absolutely everything is made overseas and it's just not the case. Um, and for us, it's definitely not only our unique selling point domestically, but overseas, people really trust products that are made in Australia. So we're representing business, not just for business sake, but also because we are proudly Australian made and overseas that just resonates. Hey Nate, yeah. have you ever had that thing that happens to you when you search for a cute pair of shoes online and then all of a sudden all your ads on Facebook are all about shoes? Oh no, I haven't. All my ads are like self-help books on like how to deal with that one co-host in your life that's really annoying and asks silly questions. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Sticking with that topic, this month Bright Mind Lynn Min Buchanan is looking into the influence of the online marketing of energy drinks on young people. This segment is made possible by University of Wollongong. I'm Limin Buchanan. I'm a PhD student from the School of Health and Society, Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Wollongong. In my PhD research, we look at the impact of online food marketing on young people consumption behaviours. So we conducted a randomised controlled trial and experimental study. We get participants to have a look at to energy drinks website and social media sites for about eight to 10 minutes. And then we use survey questions to measure their attitudes, perceptions of these brands and energy drinks products in general before and after the experiments. And we also conducted a semi-structured interviews at the end of the experiments to find out what strategies on the website and social media sites that they found really appealing or what changed or have not changed their attitudes towards these sort of products. Digital food marketing are very invasive but less regulated in compared to the traditional broadcast media marketing like TV or newspaper. In this digital age, our Facebook or smartphone know where we are, who we are, what we like. As soon as you Google search about something, all of a sudden your Facebook page is filled up with the advertisement of that product. So can we stop Facebook or our smart device from tracking us? Yes, we actually can. They are all listed down under the user agreement, which is usually way too long that most of us can't be bothered to read. We just click yes, 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 agree, agree, agree. So that we can use Facebook, so that we can join the service. So you either join it or leave it. Well, we can't advise people not to go on the internet or not to use the social media um, at all. But some sort of restrictions are definitely needed to restrict this sort of unhealthy food markings on the online platforms. So one of the very interesting and surprising findings from my research was young people found that the corporate social responsibility work by the energy drinks companies are very appealing. For example, as long as Red Bull claimed that 
Their cans are recyclable. The MG claim that they support the charities. Young people actually found that these products are actually not so bad. So our research highlight the clever or really cr、um, creativity sort of food marketing strategies used by the food marketers. So with greater awareness of the persuasive intention of the food marketing, food marketers of food industries, people are less likely to purchase or fall into the trap of buying this sort of unhealthy products. And now we chat with Bob Lanigan from NEC to find out about their decision to open an office right here in Wollongong at the Innovation Campus. This segment is made possible by Advantage Wollongong. Lancaster Law and Mediation, and Kazan Business and Financial. My name is Bob Lanigan. I'm the National Sales Manager for NEC Australia, executing the strategies across all territories and states. NEC Australia has established its technical support centre here in Wollongong to deliver services to our state and federal clients across Australia, and have chosen Wollongong for a number of unique benefits. From our Wollongong service centre, we're delivering technical support services from a level one through to level four support,、uh, ticket registration through to fault resolution. We've established a workforce in Wollongong in excess of 110 staff. These are roles that have been brought back onshore from offshore opportunities, and are driving growth into the Illawarra region. The customers currently being serviced from our Wollongong facility are state government customers for New South Wales, but this will expand to include both our federal clients as well as other state agencies from across the country. Some of the considerations when choosing a location for our new support centre was to have strong infrastructure links to allow staff to travel、uh, long distances, good links to major cities for international and interstate clients to travel by plane. Or public transport, and also a strong work-life balance in the local Illawarra region. The Illawarra region has got a significant number of IT executives that have historically travelled to Sydney、um, for work, but we also have an access pool of graduate students from the University of Wollongong, and we've been able to leverage both the experienced、uh, people from the industry as well as developing graduates and junior staff from the general、uh, population. So as we move forward in the marketplace in the Illawarra region, our intention is to drive a deeper and stronger relationship with the University of Wollongong, with the Illawarra region, and also assist in developing other businesses within the region. Da -da -da -da! Now it's time for us to give away some prizes. Chris Fleming will be getting frozen in nitrogen thanks to Now Cryotherapy. Congrats, Chris. We hope you enjoy it. Natasha Vukerman has won the $100 voucher thanks to Jose Jones. And that's it. That's our show. If you enjoyed this month's episode, let us know by hitting that thumbs up button. If you want to know more about any of this month's stories, you can find links in the show notes below. In the Loop Wollongong is only made possible because of the support of our partners. So please show your support to our media partner I98 FM, who play those sick beats all the time. Are made possible by partners Wollongong Central, Discover the City. The University of Wollongong, where everyone also gets a degree in how to drink coffee. That's true. Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Destination Wollongong, where you can get all your top tips on how to get around town. Access Law Group, resolution is our solution. Hazen Business and Financial. Lancaster Law and Mediation. Illawarra Mercury. Internetrix. Relativity. Hey guys. Our promotional partners, who you can see here. And our kitchen partners. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on In the Loop. Bye. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yes, awesome. Let's do it again. I've got the words. <laughs> <laughs>